Well, let's start on the hardwood boys. High school basketball teams competed in quarterfinal action of the section tournament tonight. In section 1A, the seven-seeded Fillmore Central Falcons faced the tough two-seeded Spring Grove Lions team in the second half. Lions find Ben Udston behind the arc. Spring Grove is up seven. Falcons Josh Hogarud is open in the corner right there. And he gets that three to fall, cutting the Lions lead to six. Falcons Luke Hellickson finds Kyle Daniels in the paint for the finish. Fillmore Central with the upset, beating Spring Grove by just one point, 56 to 55. And the three-seeded Rushford Peterson Trojans have the six seed, the Goodhue Wildcats. Trojans Caden Lee from the top of the key, putting RP up three early. Wildcats Michael Roshan drives right there. With the fancy move to get to the hoop, he finishes that one. Good, he was down by just one. Trojans lead, draws defenders here, dishes it off to Caden Johnson for the finish. Wildcats are moving on though, beating the Trojans 75 to 64. And in section 1-2A, the seven-seeded Winona Cotter Ramblers had a tough opponent tonight in the two-seed, the Caledonia Warriors. The Warriors are in black. The Ramblers are in white jerseys in the first. Ramblers Grant King with the rebound right there and the putback. Cotter is up four to nothing early. Warriors Garrett Kantz with the steal and Ethan Stendhal with the finish right there. Caledonia is up by just one and Warriors Reed Klug finds Ben Stemper on the perimeter. Adding three more to the board, Caledonia knocked off Cotter in a close one, 63 to 59. And three-seeded Cannon Falls Bombers face the six-seed, the Lewiston El Toro Cardinals. Cannon Falls finds Aiden Johnson in the paint for the two. It's all tied up at 12 in the first. The teams were trading threes. Cardinals, J.C. Ferguson, nothing but net. The Cardinals are up by three, and Bombers' Dylan Banks has an answer. Take a look at this one from behind the arc. He drains that triple. Cannon Falls got the 71 to 69 victory over Lewis and Altura. In North Iowa, the state tournament is here for boys high school basketball teams. In the 1A semifinals, the Lake Mills Bulldogs taped off against Marquette Catholic. At the start of the fourth, Marquette is up six. The Bulldogs find Aiden Sensra down low and he gets the two right there, cutting the lead to just four. And the Bulldogs find Stensra again. Take a look at this. He gets that layup to fall. Marquette is up by three. And with about 10 seconds to go in the game, Marquette's cannon still drives right there. And take a look at this. With the floater, that would be the final. Marquette Catholic is moving on, knocking off Lake Mills 59 to 57. Well, the Century Panthers boys hockey team is heading to the state tournament for the first time in more than a decade. KAMT News 3's Emma Stebb caught up with the team as they get ready for the Class 2A quarterfinal matchup. In its first season as a combined team, the Rochester Century John Marshall boys hockey team punched its ticket to the state tournament, defeating the five-time defending champions Lakeville South in the Section 1 final. Oh, that was the best part of my life so far. It was a blast. I mean, once we scored the first goal, I was pretty confident that we could keep the lead if we just kept on playing how we were. I mean, we were confident, and then we scored the second goal, and then the confidence just kept on rolling, so it was a blast. The Panthers upset Lakeville South 4-1 to one to advance to the state tournament. And nobody expected us to win, and the kids just worked hard and did what they needed to do. The team hopes to keep its season alive as they hit the ice at the XL Energy Center. Playing in front of all the people and stuff and get to play out where the Minnesota Wild play, so that'll be fun. Head coach Josh Klingfist says this team is pretty special. Just being, you know, good teammates and work hard for each other and they really just grabbed onto that and that's kind of the team that we have. We, do we have some skill? Yes, but we have 20 guys that just work hard every single day and they work hard for each other. The team received quite the send off as they hit the road for St. Paul. The Panthers say this win was bigger than hockey. Yeah, we can just feel it with like how packed the wreck was on last Thursday's night game. You could just tell the community wanted us to win and was there to support us. Much needed in the town, um, only for, for our youth hockey program. It was great to see a lot of the little kids at the games. Um, and then just the, bu just the buzz around the community. Everybody's pretty excited. So we hope to go up there and do the best we can for the community and see what happens. 
And the puck drops between the Panthers and the two-seeded Chanhassen Storm tomorrow morning at the Excel Energy Center at 11. And let's talk some women's hoops. In the Big Ten, the tournament kicked off today for women's basketball teams. The 11-seeded University of Minnesota Golden Gophers tipped off against the 14-seeded Rutgers Scarlet Knights. The Gophers are moving on, knocking off Rutgers 77 to 69. Minnesota's Amaya Battle led the team in points with 32. The Gophers will face the six-seeded Michigan Wolverines tomorrow.